My name is W. E. Merner. I'm a professor of chemistry at Stanford University and uh, by courtesy of Applied Physics. Uh, my group is a single molecule spectroscopy and imaging group. Uh, our work involves looking at how light interacts with matter on this fundamental level of, the, of single molecules. These days, uh, single molecule imaging ha has found a new application. Uh, even though single molecules were detected in, uh, more than 20 years ago, now we're using them as nanoscale points of light inside materials to achieve imaging beyond the diffraction limit. And this particular idea rests on both being able to image a single molecule and therefore fit the shape of the image of the molecule, the point spread function of the molecule, to determine its position to high resolution as, as one key element. And then the other key element is uh, and a wonderful idea that appeared in the scene in uh, about 2006 from several groups to be able to control the emission of the, of the molecules by photo activation or photo switching. So the point here is that if you have a large number of molecules all emitting at the same time, they'll blur out and you won't be able to distinguish individual single molecules. But if you turn them off and on, if you control their concentration by light or other methods, then you can make sure only one is emitting at any given time and then uh, find its precise location, and then the location of the next one, location of the next one, and so forth. So in a time sequential fashion, we build up an image of the underlying structure. This is a method that's been termed PALM, STORM, F-PALM, and, and, in terms of a bunch of different acronyms that came out from the people that realized if you added switching to single molecules, then you can uh, achieve resolution beyond the diffraction limit. So this uh, turning on and turning off idea, I'd like to call it active control, uh, actually, because the experimenter has the problem, uh, needs to actively control the concentration of molecules so it's so low that you don't have them overlapping. And you can do that by using um, blinking processes. You can do that by selecting molecules that blink on and off, that go into long-lived dark states part of the time. Uh, so that the, mole the single molecules are on, off, on, off, on, off, and if you do that right, then most are off and only a few are on at any given time. That'll work. Another way to do this is by photoactivation, which is just pure turn on. Uh, all the molecules start dark, and then you turn on only a few. You use a very dim activating light that turns on only a few. Image those, photo bleach them, turn on a few more. Image those, photo bleach them, turn on a few more. And ultimately, the, all the positions that you get of these, these single molecule images will trace out your structure in a pointillist reconstruction, if you like. This is a very new idea, uh, only a couple of years old. Uh, and first of all, super resolution with, with single molecules has uh, only been around since 2006. A lot of people have been trying to add three-dimensional information to the two-dimensional images where this all started. And so the double helix is one of the new uh, and interesting ideas for, for getting Z information as well as X and Y. So we've, we've produced several different proofs of principle of uh, how the, uh, the method works. For example, we've imaged proteins inside a bacterium. So inside a tiny bacterium only about two microns long, we can show the, the shape of the structure of, of a, an assembly of particular proteins that make a filament that's inside the cell, uh, far beyond the diffraction limit. Uh, we did that in combination with uh, imaging the surface of the cell. So that was two different colors being imaged, one of a structure inside the cell and one of the surface of the cell, uh, all with three-dimensional information from this double helix point spread function. A double helix point spread function is a scheme that allows us to determine the Z position of the molecule, the axial position of the molecules in an image. So it's, it, and on the surface, it's some kind of wonderful magic. We, we do a two-dimensional image, but extract from the image the Z position of the molecules, not just X and Y. Uh, the, the double helix point spread function was invented by Rafael Pistun at the University of Colorado some years ago for trying to measure depth. And it's a special point spread function. It's a special optical field that is formed of a superposition of the basis functions, the gauss laguerre modes of light, but it has the property that as you uh, examine what happens through the focus of the microscope, there are two focal spots that rotate around one another. So the double helix point spread function is named for that reason. Instead of a conventional microscope where you focus to a single point and then you diverge after focusing, 
This particular optical field has two foci that rotate around each other or revolve around each other uh, for different positions along the z-axis. And uh, so that means that in any one image, the image of a single molecule, in this case, is two spots. And the angle of revolution of those two spots around one another encodes the z position of that molecule. Each single molecule now, instead of being a single point where you get x and y from fitting the shape, you get x, y, and z by fitting the shape of two spots and their, and their angle of revolution with respect to one another. So that means that using the double helix, we get x, y, and z for each single molecule, but then apply these ideas that I mentioned of palm storm, f palm, that allow you to turn molecules on and off and all along a, 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 in many positions in a structure and then reconstruct the three-dimensional image afterwards. The research that we do uh, is uh, not based on commercial instruments usually uh, because we're trying to develop techniques and capabilities that are not available yet. However, uh, some of these ideas uh, that I mentioned, the, the uh, palm, storm, etc., methods for achieving super resolution using single molecules and, uh, and switching and active control, um, is now, are now beginning to appear in a number of commercial, commercial devices. So we always have a challenge of uh, pushing our measurements as far as possible and beyond what's been done before. And the, uh, being able to take measurements beyond the diffraction limit is, is a, a wonderful new step. Um, many measurements now work at, let's say, a factor of five below the diffraction limit. Can we go to 10? Can we go to 20? And, and so the, one of the things that drives us is always pushing further and further to get more and more information. It, we've, we've just found that uh, by looking at single molecules, you learn a lot more than, than if you had looked only at averages and stayed back in, in diffraction-limited imaging.